Hey, man, you still using the master fader like a rookie? You a master fader. <laughs> hey, man. Yeah, you. You master fading all wrong. <laughs> I was going to make a funny intro, you know, with the words master fader, but it was too close. Too sketch. Let's just get to the video. <laughs> what's up youtube welcome back to the channel i am wavy wayne from wavywayne.com and this is if this is your first time here make sure that you go ahead take a quick second and hit the subscribe button and hit the like button that's the only price of admission for this game that i'm about to get y'all all right also, I want to let y'all know that wavywayne.com has some incredible sales going on right now on all my session templates to help recording and mixing go a whole lot smoother and faster for you. So go ahead and visit wavywayne.com right now so that you don't miss out on these deals. You feel me? Now, let's get into this session where I'm going to be telling y'all the real truth, the facts about using a master fader in Pro Tools, man, because I know that there's a lot of misconceptions. A lot of people are doing stuff completely wrong when it comes to the using the master fader so let's go ahead and break that down right now so that you don't be one of them people <laughs> all right so first thing first i want y'all to get a pen and pad because there's a couple of things that i want to go over i want y'all to make sure that you write these down you feel me so first thing first a master fader right when you're talking about track types this is the master fader type you you always want to create a stereo master fader at least for your overall mix okay but let's say what oh what is the definition of a master fader what does it do in pro tools a master fader can be used to control the output levels of your entire mix or any other uh, any outputs it can control the output levels or levels on a bus okay so keep that in mind write that down the master fader can be used to control the output levels or bus levels in your pro tools session all right Second thing that I want y'all to write down is that the master fader is the only track in Pro Tools that has post fader inserts, okay? Post fader inserts, super, super important to know that and understand how it works. That means every other track in Pro Tools has pre fader inserts, and I'll break that down for you in a second during this video. But the master fader track is the only track in Pro Tools that provides post fader inserts. And the last thing that I want y'all to remember is don't ever, 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 ever change the level of your master fader. We're going to get back to that and I'll explain why in a moment. All right. So let's go ahead and break down, take a look at my session. So in a typical session, uh, the most basic use of a master fader kind of falls just like this. Right. We got all of our tracks routed to an output and then we'll have a stereo master fader um, that basically controls the level of that output. Now, that's perfectly fine. Right now, again, because that is one of the uh functions of the master fader is to control the level of the output so if i'm moving my uh, fader up and down i'm gonna play this real quick All right so you see that that master fader is actually uh, controlling the level of the output now the the second thing that we talked about is how the master fader is the only track with post fader inserts okay um so let's take a look here i'm going to actually put a vu meter on this track and we're going to see the difference here so on any other track right as i'm playing this we're going to see that as i pull the fader down the level going into this meter is going to change Okay, now that change has serious implications for us, especially if we are talking about adding any processing on our master fader. For example, a lot of people like to do a fade out on their master fader, right, to where you can come over simply and add a couple of breakpoints. Let's just say I add one here just by command clicking this automation graph line, add one there, drag the second one down, create a real simple fade out, right? But check out what happens on the fade out.
the level going into the inserts on the master fader track are actually uh, is actually dropping down. So if I'm using a compressor or a limiter or anything like that on this track, then that means the level going into that compressor is going to be different. So my threshold may not, the level may not hit my threshold. The track is not going to be compressed the same way as that fade out starts to happen if I'm doing a fade out on the master fader. Super important. So what can we do to work around that? Well, again, I just told y'all that every that only, every other track in Pro Tools is um, provides you pre-fader inserts. So what one thing that I like to do is to actually route all of my tracks in my session to a submaster first. So in this case, I would make a aux input track, right? So Let's go with a um, a simple way to do this is to select all the tracks. If you hold shift and option, you can actually click on the output track, of the, out, the track's output path selector. Um, if you're working on a PC, then it's going to be shift and alt. But I'm just going to select all the tracks that I want to route first, click on their output, route to a new track, and for this new track, it's going to be a stereo aux input track. It already set up for me. We're going to name this sub master. Right. So this is where I would really want to do my fade out, right, on my submaster. So now, oh, that's happening because I'm on that fade. Let's back this up. And actually, let's get rid of this fade altogether. All right, and let's go ahead and copy a VU meter here. So this VU meter to the left is the VU meter on my aux input track. You'll notice that as I change this level, you see this VU meter is not moving whatsoever, okay? That's because the inserts on a sub uh, on a aux input track and every other track in Pro Tools are pre-fader. That means that this level uh, going into the insert is not affected by the fader. It's before the fader, okay? On a master fader, the inserts are post-fader. They're after the fader, okay? So keep that in mind so if you want to do a fade out the appropriate way to do that would be to have all your tracks ultimately routed to a aux input track that you could call submaster right and then you can do your fade out easily on this without affecting any levels going into the plugin so you could ultimately just go ahead and do all your processing here so if i was going to do any compressing or limiting or whatever eq and whatever the hell that you want to do you do it on the submaster track and then you won't have to worry about um the effects of the the fade out that might happen on the master fader so the full level is still going into the um the 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 compressors or limiter processors that i may be having now also take a look at this so let's say that you know i, I wanted to just do my fade out on my master if you're using a sub master then you can absolutely fade out on the master because still the same level is going to be riding through the whole time so everything that's getting processed on your sub master track is not going to affect what's happening on this master fader Cause we still got full level going there. So perfect, right? Right, right. You liking that? There's another use for the the uh, master fader, and like I said before, and that is to control the levels of a bus. So in this case, let's use the sub master bus as a point of reference here. Sub master bus is just um, a bus that that's just I just created, right? Just like any other bus, it could have been one and two, three and four, five, six. Who cares what bus it is? But what I'm gonna do is actually create another stereo master fader in this section session and the output that i'm going to assign this master fader to is going to be the sub master bus right so i'm going to assign it to a bus now the reason that you would want to assign a sub master to a bus because often i like to mix with like a limiter on and let's just go with a simple limiter like a l2 right so let's say i'm working and i'm mixing with this limiter and i got the threshold down let's just say for some reason i was experiencing peaks so i'm going to just boost this up and get some peaks going if you notice on the actual submaster track is not peaking at all right nothing is peaking 
um, and, and there's no overs here because the limiter is catching it and you can see that, right? And via, I do, mind you, I do have a VU meter here, which is also important. You can keep that there. But what this submaster will allow you to do is see if the bus is overloading before it hits anything else um, in your session. So basically this submaster here is monitoring the submaster bus. This, this master fader is monitoring the submaster bus. And it actually will allow me to control the level of the bus too, because all these tracks coming together are starting to overload, but the individual tracks aren't overloading. So what I can do is actually adjust the level of the bus. And now I'm not overloading anymore. Very, very cool way to use a master fader in your session. Last thing I want to really drill into y'all is don't, you're not supposed to be using your master fader, right? If you, even if you're using it in the most simple sense, you're not supposed to be using your master fader to achieve the ultimate levels that you want for your mix. So if you want your mix to be, um, you know, hovering around negative eight or 10 or negative six, whatever the hell you want your mix to be at, you do not, if your mix is too loud, don't just go and grab the master fader and turn it down. That is absolutely wrong way to go about it if your mix is too loud you want to go to the individual tracks and adjust those tracks adjust your levels in your mix to get the desired output that you want um because again everything could be overloading and then you just turning down an overloaded signal okay and if it's too quiet same thing don't just turn up the master fader address the individual tracks that's going to be the best way to get the best results all right, y'all, I really hope you found this video helpful. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com, and I drop videos like this all the time to put you on to game, all right? If you like this, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. Go ahead and visit wavywayne.com. Copy you a session template. They got sessions set up the way that I mix every single day, man, and <laughs> they only getting better. I got a great deal going on right now, all right? Leave a comment below if you got any questions about this, and be dope.